And hello, everyone. Welcome to a segment we're calling Christian's Corner, because Christian is joining us for a separate recording. Hello, uh, hello. To talk about the Mandalorian. We just are wrap. We just wrapped up our hour-long talk on the Expanse, so you should go watch that whenever you want to, and also watch the show Expanse. Just to reiterate, watch yeah. the Expanse. Watch the Expanse. Watch the Expanse. It's great. So Christian is going to be giving us his thoughts yeah. and. Uh, musings on the Mandalorian season two and specifically the finale as well as possibly a little season three um and as like kind of just a universe talk of like where they're going with all the Disney plus stuff that dropped because it was a ton of stuff that dropped it was so we're gonna a lot, start man there's so much so much we're gonna start with the most recent thing with the Mandalorian which is the finale of course that aired today we're recording this on the 18th um so Christian what did you think of the season two the Mandalorian which is, the, I believe it was called The Rescue Finale. Yes, yes. I thought it was good. It was... Let me... let me. I thought it, it, it was going very well. I was enjoying it a lot. I thought it had a very abrupt ending. I thought, like, the, the lead-up to the, the rescue and the rescue itself was great. I liked the twist with the Darksaber about it needing to be one in combat or whatever. Although that kind of tripped me up a little bit, too. And then the the reveal of Luke was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I loved that. I thought it was going to be um, Ahsoka making her return. And then you get like the green saber and you go, oh shit. And you see like the black outfit. You see the robot hand. You see the human hand. You're like, I straight up said, I was like, if Luke fucking Skywalker walks through that door, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. And then... It just ended. It did, I didn't feel like we were supposed to end at all. I thought we had another like at least ten minutes of kind of fall like a uh, falling action and, mm-hmm. and resolution or something. Well, that's pretty on point for the show. Was... I think it very much so. Just oh, we're moving on, which I appreciate. Yeah. And it's rather western to just be like, and we ride off into the sunset to never speak about this again. Kind of like the story yeah. is just done. It was just like. Everyone was still in the ship. Luke pieced out with Grogu and R2. And then Bo Katan has got shot up. Uh, is she dead? It did I don't know what they feel it feels kind of inconsistent with the how durable that armor is that the Mandalorians use. So I don't know what her status is. I don't know what the, the plan is going forward. <laughs> yeah. They also had the the whole Darksaber like trial or uh, ownership by combat, which felt weird i will admit i haven't seen clone wars or rebels so i don't know ahsoka or Bo very yeah. well so they they to me they were playing the whole dark saber combat thing like it was this grave horrible situation like oh no you two have to fight but like din fought gideon and won the saber and that was that was pretty easy. I feel like they can just, the two can fight and Din can just throw the fight. Mm-hmm. If it was a fight to the death, then yeah, I could see that. Absolutely. I get where the, the conflict is coming from, but that didn't even happen with yeah. Din and Gideon. So I don't, I don't know that whole like, uh, scene kind of fell flat for me. Cause I just didn't really get why it was such a big deal. Yeah. So yeah, to your point, uh, that is the dark saber becomes a big part in rebels. Um, obviously okay. we've seen Bo-Katan in, three series now she's been clone wars as like the sister of like the ruler of mandalore she's the militant sister the sister okay. was a pacifist she, she, who was in love with obi-wan like their whole okay and it's very much tied into like the how darth maul escapes and gets his revenge on obi-wan obi-wan stuff and if you're a darth maul fan you gotta watch clone wars and rebels because how they tie that all into the mandalore plot fuck is it good it's so cool some of the best star wars interesting period. okay and it's run by one of the guys okay who did help kind of oversee Mandalore, the Mandalorian. And that's Dave Filoni. He's very much beating the drum for okay. Star Wars is a space Western all the time. Like that's his thing. Okay. He's Texan, wears a cowboy hat. It's what he does. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. And like they set up, and you're right, they do set up the combat by uh, ownership of combat, by combat uh, in that show. I would also recommend you watch that. Um, so yeah. I've been told um, it's good. It's on my list. Yeah. It, they're great shows. So those are the, your thoughts on the finale. So let's move into kind of season two as a whole, as well as, you know, mm-hmm. kind of contrasting it to season one. What did you think about season two in its entirety so far? I thought season two was 
better than season one. Season one was very inconsistent for me. I liked half the season. I hated half the season. I appreciated the kind of episodic format that it had, but I liked season two's more... It's not, a, I think, two kind of standalone episodes, but for the most part, it was telling a serialized narrative, which I appreciated more. <clears throat> I also liked how it started to expand the the universe of the show like the stuff with ahsoka and the stuff with boba fett i was actually hesitant on the boba fett stuff because at first it just felt like massive fan service and it still kind of does but it also it worked within the context of this season i don't know how i feel about boba fett getting his own show that didn't really interest me at all with that scene i was like uh okay i guess i'm curious if it's going to be more of like a two to three episode miniseries than a full-blown series but hey, more Ming-Na Wei, I'm Something fine Something like that. Ming-Na Wei is awesome. I'm yeah. more fine with seeing That's her on true. screen. Yeah, very true. Yeah, I'm down for more Fennec. She was awesome. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I liked the, like I said, the new characters they added. I don't like Cara Dune. I could not care less for her at all. I just don't and like I, the I actress. think she's like a, a fine, that's exactly it. I think she's a fine character. I think she's well-written. I just think that actress is horrible. Yeah, like... <laughs> she's not good imagine if it was somebody like is it gina carano yeah imagine if it was like rebecca ferguson that was my pick too like, <laughs> i was fuck? thinking the exact same like, thing you know like rebecca ferguson oh she'd be the best part of the show yeah. and she kind of fit the age yeah. a little better because she's supposed to be like an extra you know she's yeah. a veteran and all that just saying if you're gonna do a rangers of the you know rangers of the new republic and you need to recast her rebecca ferguson disney just saying absolutely it's i love that you and i both thought rebecca ferguson she's, she's awesome <laughs> yeah she's the best yeah the mission impossible movies won me over i was like all right she's the yeah. badass she can do she's anything. awesome i'm in i'll yeah. watch anything with her yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, what, any other thoughts and on like, like uh, the... sorry discord's being weird again what were you saying no you're good no, you're good. What were you going to ask? I was going to say, any other thoughts on season two in general? Like, did you think there was a specific weak point or like a high point that you were like, that was fucking amazing? Hmm. Weak point, it started off a little slow. Like, I didn't care for the, was it the second or third episode with the frog lady? I yeah, with the spiders and stuff. Yeah, and then I gotta say the penultimate episode, episode 7, was pretty weak. For being in the penultimate episode, I thought more was gonna happen. Whereas, it didn't really advance the plot. Like, they got the codes and they found the ship. That's all that happened in that episode. Bill Burr was awesome. He was the best part of the episode. Yeah. We got to see his character and enjoy his character more. And then... I... So, everybody loves Baby Yoda for being adorable and not... I love Baby Yoda because I think he's a dumbass looking baby. I think he's the stupidest character <laughs> and he cracks me up all the time. And I love the fact that his name is fucking Grogu. Yeah. That's the name. <laughs> and... yeah. It fits. It's, yeah. it's so it's fitting. Good. Just a dipshit name for this dipshit baby. It just... My favorite part of the show is just watching him do stuff. Like when he's meditating. Yeah, when he's just the like rock. just rocking out. Like I love the memes with like the Super Saiyan hair or hit like they were like they like yeah. rock the character and he's just like listening to rock music or something. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I I want to see this is be being half serious. I like how they're toying with the idea of him being attracted to the dark side. Like how he had the force choking Kara in season 1. And then in the episode six, I think, when he gets taken and he's just force slamming the stormtroopers all over the room looking pissed. Yeah. And then he's like wanting to reach out to the dark saber. Like, I want to see Grogu go down the dark side. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be good, but I think it'd be awesome. So that leads me kind of naturally into the kind of last portion here um, of our self-imposed mm -hmm. 15 minutes. We're at about six minutes. Um of what's yeah. going to come next. Like you said, they do, they do end very abruptly. We do know we're getting more Mandalorians, mm -hmm. specifically The Mandalorian Show. Boba Fett's getting their spinoff possible miniseries or show. Ahsoka's getting a show where she's going to go find Thrawn. We're going to see the characters from Rebels again, I hope. But some of, they were great characters. Mm -hmm. 
and they have a Mandalorian too, Sabine Wren. I was very surprised we didn't get her this season. I thought for sure Sasha Banks was okay. going to be was going to be her because she's a younger Mandalorian okay. who grew up on Mandalore's part of a noble house, not quite on the level of Bo Katan, but it's like up there. Mm-hmm. And she actually holds the dark saber for okay. a while. Um, she's a great character. I'm surprised we didn't see her. Um, and she's actually the one in okay. canon that comes up with the rebel logo. Like she's the person that comes up with that, like the oh. starbird, because it's like a Mandalorian yeah. legend, and she paints it on like a bu- like just everywhere. Like it's her thing, as she does graffiti. Great character. Um, okay. I thought for sure Sasha Banks because she's the right character and the right ethnicity and the right age. It's like that's, oh man, that's not her. That's so weird. That caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she so, was an original character, right? Yeah, totally original character. Same with the other Mandalorian okay. dude who wasn't in the finale for some reason. Like, what happened to him? You know? Yeah, I was trying to remember. Did they explain away his absence at all, or was no, he just not there? I don't remember there being a line for that. That was bizarre. So, uh, season three, okay. obviously we're at, we're end on the bridge. Mm-hmm. He's with the other two Mandalorians himself. Boba Fett and, and Fennec are clearly going to go do their own thing. Grogu's gone, going off with Luke to presumably join the you know new Jedi Academy. So where do you think we go with specifically the Mandalorian in question, Din? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't know. I think I my my gut instinct says that he's going to now join Bo and what's what's the other girl's name? I, I can't remember her name? her name. She was a great fight. She had a great fight scene with yeah. uh, Boba Fett though this episode. I can't remember her name. Oh yeah, that was that was cool. Yeah, I think he's gonna join Bo and and the other Mandalorian in their quest to retake Mandalore with the Darksaber. That's the only thing I can think of because the whole show up to this point has just been taking care of, <laughs> of Grogu. Yeah. And now that that's done, I, I don't know. That's the only like hanging plot thread I can think of that he's remotely involved in. Yeah. And I'm very curious to see what this... Like, they've talked about Mandalore and like its state as a destroyed world a bunch mm-hmm. now. I'm very curious to see... If we actually get to see it, because obviously there's those different factions. There's the Death Watch faction that Bo-Katan references, which gets, we show, it gets, you see it first in Clone Wars and then Rebels. And again, can't stress this enough, where they, how they slow build that Mandalorian arc across multiple shows and seasons. God, that's some cool shit. Fucking cool. And like to see their civilization, like they kind of were this old school anti-Jedi. They fought the Jedi society back in the pre-Jedi Sith days. Then they kind of got away from their warrior past until very recently rediscovering it. And then their government went pacifist in the Clone Wars. Like, where it was a neutral party, they were basically Sweden. We're like, we're, or Switzerland. And we're like, well, nope, we're not being a part of this. Then Maul shows up and fucking murders their leader, which Bo Katan's sister. Oh, and Ob- it makes Obi Wan okay. watch, which is part of the whole revenge plot. And then Bo Katan okay. and Death Watch take over because they're allied with Maul. And that's when she's like, you just killed my sister. Get fucked. And like start like go and like, leave the <laughs> resistance against Maul and the Mandalorians, mm. which gets carried on into season seven, and we finally see the Siege of Mandalore. Ending the Siege of Mandalore with the Clone Wars, as a it's like at the exact same time as episode three. So we see the clones mm. like fall and like we get to know the clones and we see them get and have to process Order 66. So fucking cool. Mm. Oh my god, I cannot sing its okay. praises enough. Um you should go watch that. Okay. But I'm very curious to see what state Mandalore is in. And like... Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that's really the interesting part. Like, how political are we going to get? Because there's all these different factions of Mandalorians, obviously, that we've seen. So, like, that's going to be really cool. And I'm very happy they didn't make yeah. Boba Fett stick around. Because in the old... Me too. In the old canon, I know if Nick watches this, he's going to get a kick out of this. But Boba Fett becomes the Mandalore. It's like M-A-N apostrophe D apostrophe A-L-O-R. Like it's said like Mandalore, but it's spelled mm-hmm. different because of the title. And if you like hold the dark saber in this canon or in the old canon, you were just the leader. Like you were the strongest Mandalore. You got that title. Boba Fett became mm-hmm. that. And this was, of course, before we knew he was a clone and all these other things. So it's old canon. But I'm very glad they didn't go down that road with Boba once they brought him back. I was curious they were going to sideline Dan- mm-hmm. or cautious they were going to sideline in and push it into being an anthology where it's mandalorian you know it's, it's just the mandalorian who cares what the guy under the mask is kind of series mm-hmm. but i'm glad we didn't go that way and he's doing his own thing same boba's dope same but like him him having his own story is 
preferable to taking over the Mandalorian, which has become its own thing. So yeah, I love Din. I would love to see more of him. Mm -hmm. I just hope he gets a new ship. That's the only thing I didn't get in the call. I knew Ahsoka. I even called the episode she was coming in, and like all these other things. (laughs) I the only thing I called that I didn't get right was that he was going to get one of you know Bo-Katan's ship that like cool like swept wing design like stands up and folds down when they're flying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I that ship is so cool. I was like, oh, he's going to get one of those. God damn it. They blew up his ship, and he didn't get a new ship at the end. I was like, I thought we were going to get that moment, and we didn't. (laughs) I was so close. I mean, season three might open with that. We'll see. Sorry. My my timer just went off. Literally Uh right then and there. So that was about 15 minutes. Mandalorian. (laughs) Anything you want to add, Christian? My last thought, if we never see Grogu again, and this does lead into the sequels, does this mean that Kylo Ren killed Grogu? I think we have to make that assumption, and that's just another reason to hate that puny fuck. <laughs> I love that idea so much. It's so messed up. Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm really curious how, if we're gonna get a t- ever get a time jump like into the sequel timeline, or if we stay in this mm, yeah, five year yeah. period, like just to kind of get away from our outro that we were going to a little bit. Like, I'm very curious about mm. that. And I'll probably get into this with yeah, Fusion same. a little bit, but like, I don't know. You obviously aren't familiar with this, but in Rebels, they set up Thrawn and Ezra, the other Jedi, who's like an actual Jedi. Ahsoka's just, I don't want to be a Jedi. I don't want any part of it. Even though she's basically the most Jedi character mm-hmm. other than Obi-Wan. Or maybe Qui-Gon. <laughs> and, but she's just like, nope, mm-hmm. you guys betrayed me. Fuck you. I'm going to go do my own thing. And okay. her, her arc is amazing, but... Ezra is an actual Jedi, like you're trained by a Jedi master and wants to be a Jedi. Him and Thrawn, the Admiral Thrawn, like the greatest strategic mind of the Empire, get blasted into deep space, and we never see them again. And so she's trying to find, mm. Ahsoka's trying to find Thrawn. His people are fighting an extra galactic invasion, and that's why they were working with the Empire to supply ships and manpower and resources. That's the only reason. The Chiss Ascendancy, the blue-skinned, mm. red-eyed people of uh, the Chiss, yeah, they don't yeah, give yeah. a fuck about the rest of the galaxy. They don't. They don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm curious They're how deep thing, we're going. Right? Yeah, I'm curious how deep because that's canon. That extra galactic invasion. That's in his book, Thrawn's book. They could hand wave mm-hmm. it and throw it out, you know, because it happens. But I'm curious if we're going to get there because if we're going there, we can't go sequel timeline because that's 25 years before the sequel. True. Like, uh-huh. how are we going to resolve that? Because that's a big gap and some big stories that should have been included in the sequel stuff that weren't like that's a huge disconnect i feel like they're gonna kind of if they were to go to one of those two timelines they're gonna go to the thrawn one because it feels like mandalorian is staying as far removed from the movies as possible they're adding in all the shows and kind of building that tv cinematic universe Mm -hmm. but they're they're not really touching the movies Mm -hmm. so that's what i'm that's what my guess is and that brings me to the I do trust in Dave Filoni and John Favreau. These these guys and mm-hmm. the directors they brought in, Taika Waititi, Bryce Dallas Howard, they all get Star Wars. Like, to an extreme mm-hmm. degree. Like, they just live and breathe Star Wars. But I trust that they'll figure it out and have a plan. Especially Dave Filoni, because, like, the Clone Wars really do make the prequels, like, legitimately good. Which is crazy, because those movies suck. That. But, like, I believe it was somebody... <laughs> like, I can't remember who I was following that was, like patch your prequels watch the clone wars i hope we can eventually say that to like like update your sequels to 2.0 with like this new tv universe that they're building out so that'll be yeah, a I curious thing to watch in the coming years because they announced a ton of stuff like seven series or something yeah, like that did. that oh are in concurrent to each other <laughs> yeah. at the same time in canon yeah. it's like holy it's gonna, shit it's gonna be a lot like <laughs> i don't know how many of them will see air like how many of them get out of pre-production but Damn, Disney ain't fucking around. Yeah. Nah, Disney's going all in. <laughs> like, as soon as WB dropped that hammer, they're like, oh, don't worry. We got this. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, did you <laughs> yeah, see that? watch and learn. Warner Brothers might get sued, like, out of existence by a couple of their partners. Like, they just broke no. all the contracts with, like, Legendary and Lionsgate for, like, distribution. Like, they're just like, we, you didn't tell oh, us boy. you were not going to put them in theaters. What the fuck? Oh, and that's contract boy. law. Oh, They're going to get boy. fucked. Like, oh, that's going to be... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy to watch them on this 4K, but 
damn, that's bad news. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Good uh, luck. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to keep you here for any more of your day. Um, but thank you, Christian, for hanging out for both the Expanse episode and this one. It's been a yes, pleasure. Once again, you. thank you for having me. This is fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anytime, man. Uh, it's always good talking, like, just talking with cool people about cool stuff. Like I said in the Expanse episode, it makes things fun. Like, I don't care if this never gets, like, super big. I just want to talk about cool shit while I'm here and while I yeah, can. Yeah, it's fun. So that's yeah, what we're going to do. That's what Wafer's all about. So thank you for hanging <laughs> out. I might get back to the regular episode, I think, for Fusion and I's outro. I think this will be our kind of end cap before me, me and Fusion come back for an outro. Maybe before we'll do an outro. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go, but we'll figure, <laughs> figure it, out. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you guys for watching. If this is indeed the outro, thank you for watching. Go follow Chris- Christian. His, his, t- his thing stuff's right there. I'm pointing at it on my screen. Subscribe on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you find your podcasts. We probably are. Leave a review if the platform has one, because that definitely helps. And I actually like constructive criticism. I know I talk a mile a minute, and I need to work on that. So let us know what you think of the show. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on our Twitters. And, of course, go watch The Expanse. I'm going to leave you on that. Go note. watch The Expanse. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. by the time watch this airs, season three, maybe, a season episode four might be out. I'm going to work on editing these tonight. And I'm hoping I get it through the weekend. But I got a busy weekend. Got to rep the Hawks. Got some big games. College football is in its, like, prime moment right now. It's going to be a busy time. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Goodbye.